Hey, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Jacques Talk. One of my all-time favorites is uh, joining us right now. He was with us, um, I guess, in mid-October, right before Ed Ogeron was uh, officially dismissed. It's uh, LSU record breaker Rohan Davey. Rohan, uh, happy Thanksgiving. Thanks happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, man. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there listening and watching. It's a good time. Thanksgiving, good family time. Uh, Rohan, when people are with their families and whatnot for Thanksgiving, one thing I, I don't think they're going to be giving great thanks for is this LSU football season. This has not been a, uh, a fun time. It's, uh, it's been a strained year. It's been uh, kind of a grind. Uh, there was so much excitement for that season opener at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. There were yeah. 20, 25,000 fans there. And uh, we're finally hitting uh, the final game of the regular season, which could be the final game of the year. Uh, for this team. Yeah, so unfortunate. Uh, started out with a lot of promise. Not the game, but just the expectations going into the season. Um, but me, man, you know, you always say that's why you play the game and that's why you never count games from what you see on paper. Mm -hmm. Because you got to go out and play. And unfortunately for us this year, it's the off the field things that has crippled us. And then ultimately got us to where we are with the firing of um, of our head coach, Coach Ogeron. Um, it's it's you know this time is is definitely not a thankful time for what we we witnessed this year in the media or even over the last 24 months, man. You know what I mean? Since the national championship, things are just for LSU as an institution has just been going downhill, so to speak. Um, and now waiting on the new hire to see who's going to uh, take LSU into the next whatever, wherever yeah. we're next to go. But I know the one thing is, man, we need to, we need to find out fast because we need to hold on to these in-state big-time recruits. So, um, and you and I kind of talked about it a month ago, and uh, we don't want to rip up, uh, rip scabs off of wounds, but the, the off-the-field uh, things with this team, uh, this year were, were a problem, and um, they, when you're not winning, all those things magnified. They get magnified and, yeah. and whatnot. And, and to be honest, Rohan, I mean, I was even after they dismissed Coach O, I was hearing rumblings of things beneath the surface that were going to maybe come up mm. that never did. Um, and so here we are, one more game left <coughs> in, the, uh, in the Ed Ogeron uh, regime. I, I, from what I'm hearing, if you put a gun to my head, I don't think he's going to coach a bowl game if LSU makes it to one. We'll see. Uh, but uh, so what do you think about Coach O and coaching his final game? There, us in the media have been chatting about a row. There's great potential in the post-game press conference, we feel like. And, uh, <laughs> and the way he coaches his team in Tiger Stadium, especially with the Look, Jimbo and uh, Coach O, they've been amicable, but it's safe to say they don't like each other probably. Right, 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 right. They're not going to... Uh, fry fish. No, nah, they ain't going to fry no fish. He ain't going to bring him none of nobody's gumbo or nothing like that. Um, you know, for me with Coach O, man, it's, he's going to always be remembered as the coach that coached one of the greatest teams, not just in LSU history, but you know, ever. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, in my opinion, where his legacy from a coach's perspective, from a winning perspective, um, to me, that's where it begins and ends, really. Um, I made I the comparison. You remember that you grew up on the 85 Bears, Chicago Bears? <laughs> Mike Ditko was always yeah. the coach of that yeah. team. He had some other good teams. Correct. But that was always his Correct. thing. Correct, correct. But, you know, but I, I mean, I think what with Ditka is still was, you know, he still, he was regarded as a coach. Yeah. I think Coach Eric Ogeron, when it comes to how he is looked at amongst his peers in the coaching profession. And also, just everybody, I think everyone knows that, you know, he's a good recruiter, like everyone has always pointed out, good motivator um, of men, but not necessarily the best head coach candidate. I think that when he got the job with us, it was a feel-good thing. It was coming off of a less mile. It was a, a lot of things that went into that. I don't think that anybody would stack Coach Ogeron up against uh, when it comes to minds yeah. as go with some of the guys that we're 
um, looking at or he's even coached against. So he, to me, he had a fantastic job. We know he bleed purple and gold. I love his energy and everything he brought, and I respect the job that he did while he was there. I don't, in, I don't respect the end of his tenure with all the stuff that comes out and even the things that didn't come out that you're referring to. So that's the part about it that just puts like a black flag on it for me with him. But him as what he did for the institution, I'll always respect that. Yeah, um, and I agree with you. I think if you put Coach Joe, um, the head coach of a team, in an interim role, something that's already established and built, he can take that yeah. and he can fire guys up and be an interim coach for six, seven, eight games yeah. or whatever. In the long term of being a head coach over a long stretch, uh, I think those were the problems that just popped up. You know, knowing a calendar, knowing how to maintain a program. This this uh, this team's got some talent on it, as we see right now. That it's the little things, man. It's yeah. the little things um, that you know. I've been around, fortunate enough to have been around some really, really great coaches in NFL as well as in college, and that's what it is. And it's always been that way for me with Coach O. It's the little things that it takes for you to win that I just never saw being done or even thought about. You know what I mean? So when mm -hmm. he comes in press conference and says certain things, and you're like, like Elias Rich, you know, he didn't. He wasn't sure if he was in the transfer portal or not. You know, yes, things and at like this that. Point, I guess he's like, well, I'm there, not going to be And here. then the thing about it, if you're trying to lie, there's a better way to lie. You know what I mean? If you're trying to not put news out, it's not do this, just do what Bill say. I'm on to the next question. Well, you know what I'm saying? You, yeah. can, you don't have to try to act like you know or don't know because it makes you look even more crazy. Yeah, I don't want to pile on or anything, but it, to me it just seemed like that's a five minute to make a uh, – give me my cell phone, Elias Rex. Hey, Elias, you in the transfer portal? Yes, sir. Okay, I just needed to know. But I uh, mean, but you have position <laughs> coaches. You have coaches. I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure he knew that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and if he doesn't, that's a problem in itself. Yeah. You know, if you don't know your second best corner is in the transfer portal, that's a problem. Yeah. If oh, you don't man. know who's calling the play and what personnel should be in the game for this specific play, that's a problem. Yeah. And you then, know, it's all those little things. Well, and then some people talked about how the, uh, he spoke about Garrett Nussmeyer's situation in the media about you know whether or not he was going to transfer or not and maybe shouldn't have shared as much information as he did he's always been honest and i think scott wilbert said honest to a fault at times uh the exact opposite of les miles who would give you what we would call a word salad well you gotta have that <laughs> happy medium and the thing about it is i'm part of the media now but media doesn't need to know everything I agree there's some things that you yeah I, you know you can answer that question a different way to also keep some of what the kid doesn't want to get out or the integrity of whatever this kid has shared with you or has not shared with you. But at the end of the day, it's still about that kid. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, sometimes I just think the ego of us as men and the ego of us of when we get put on this pedestal of winning championships and, um, you know, now you're on front of buses and all that type of, it's a lot to deal with and it's a lot to take on. And I just think that that, that period there is where we lost our head coach, yeah, so to speak. Yeah, well, ego, I mean, even if you're a local yokel uh, like me on local TV or uh, times out of a million, the head yeah. coach of LSU, I, right. think, I think they always say you got to have some of that, be confident in yourself or you're not going to get run over. But, um, uh, and, and also, Rohan, okay, you being uh, an offensive player and a quarterback and everything, it just seemed like uh, outside of Steve Ensminger and then the Steve Ensminger joe Brady uh, marriage there that worked so well in 2019, Coach O and his offensive coordinator, whether it was Matt Canada or Jake Peets, uh, were just on two different pages, it seemed like. And I think you saw the same thing this year with your defensive coordinator. Based on our last three games, our last three games have been polar opposite of our previous, what, six or whatever it may have been. That's a totally, completely different defensive scheme and mindset you're seeing. So funny you said I was talking to Rondell Mealy yesterday. We were doing some things for, um, for some meals and some socks and stuff that are homeless and kids were just sitting out talking about some things. And he brought up all the offensive coordinators that's been out of here. And I told him a long time ago, Canada, Canada was good. Mm -hmm. Canada was ran out because 
he didn't he was trying to be controlled and didn't want his offense being they didn't coach didn't want to allow him to run his offense Canada was good two quick two people quick row I can think of that benefited a lot from Matt Canada Russell Gage who's now in the NFL who didn't do anything until Matt Canada got here then they start running those jet sweeps we saw Russell leaping over people and uh, and Daryl Williams Daryl Williams I realized played behind Leonard Fournette and Darius Geis before his last year but they never threw the ball to the running backs before Matt Canada got here. You saw Daryl catching passes and getting a lot more involved. Canada was good. I liked him. I had a conversation with him. I, I, know, I knew he was a high head, but he was a high head because he knew he was good. Mm -hmm. Some of those guys are high head, but they know that he was good. He man. was a job hopper, too. I think he Well, did. He, was, he did the opportunity, but I think that when he got here, he did. He was. He was opportunist, looking for opportunity, and he found it here. It, yeah. He was good. He wasn't one of the guys that I thought sucked. I thought he was pretty good. He instrumented a lot of motion to give the off to give the uh, quarterback an opportunity to see the scene and see. So he was quarterback friendly, like you pointed out with Williams and those boys. Like he was good. Yeah, he was good. And I think you seeing it now with Jones, where he was being held back, and now the last three weeks. And I mean, yeah, it, it's just been a different. You seen pressure. You seen guys. And this is not even with our guys. Yeah, I oh, want to go to Alabama and hold Alabama. That's what I mean. Like, I think 30 points, close to 30 points beneath their scoring average. I mean, it kept the us in the game. In the football game, the entire football game, Alabama never pulled away from us. The defense kept relentless pressure the entire game. And again, we didn't have a full, it wasn't with our guys, not with all our guys. And right. those guys are still out there making plays. So they've been coaching on the defensive ball the last three weeks, man. It's unfortunate that we didn't see this at the beginning of the year. Cause, yeah, because you know he'll probably have a better case to stick around or to at least interview with the in with whoever is incoming. And then Arkansas uh, after the Alabama game for LSU, I think Arkansas, including the overtime, got 15 possessions and scored one touchdown. And Correct. Then Arkansas went to Alabama and scored a Ran lot of points the, yeah. <laughs> the next week. Ran and, it up. Uh, and and to hit on the positives too, bro. I mean, Damone Clark, who always had the physical, like when he showed up, he was the Incredible Hulk when he showed up. But it was just a matter of him learning the game and kind of uh, becoming a student of the game. And you see him now, he's a, he's a finalist for the Butkus Award, the, grest, the best linebacker in the country. Yeah, Moan is a hell of a player, man. And I've been fortunate enough to watch him work with my partner, Ken Annie, over the last three years and see how much work he puts in. So, you know, sometimes, man, a lot with these kids, it's the same thing. When you have defensive coordinators coming in and they changing your position and putting you in different positions and you have different keys and different ways that they're teaching it, you see these guys not playing football. They're thinking instead of reacting. It's a reactive sport. I went through the same thing this year with my son. Um, being physical, but you, you, you have to play the game mentally, and that's where Damone has come into his own now because of getting all those other coordinators. Okay, this is, this is another coordinator. I can't take this step. It's this step. It's this way. So he's learned it and always been a fantastic energy guy. He's one of those guys that regardless of what was going on this year, he showed up and played every game, every game. Him and him and Jay Ward, Baskerville, Jay, Baskerville, with, with now. Uh, um, uh, eight, um, all those guys. Like, I mean, Jay Ward is like Oja Larry. Oja Larry. Sorry, yeah. it took me a second. <laughs> I was uh, thinking Malik Neighbors. But. Nah, Malik's a monster. But <laughs> Jay Ward is like my my favorite player. He's he's he is one of my favorite players from the beginning because he never he never blinked. I know Coach O's uses he never made, but Jay Ward, like even with everything going on, guys dropping off this and that, yeah. he's still pff, 200 pounds at best, coming down, knocking your behind off, intercepting the ball, instincts. I love him. I love yeah. him. Got a pick six called back. Uh, yeah, it sucked. He stepped out. <laughs> or did he? Oh well. He stepped out. He, he stepped, stepped out. out. Okay. Stepped All right. I was out. up in the press box trying to watch it. On I was hoping there. they ain't call it because he, he his instincts was just incredible on that play. He's and, a good player. And just real quick to another bouquet I'd like to toss out Blake Baker, the linebackers coach, a bright young coach who's come in here and done some good work. I don't think he'll be back on the next staff at yeah. LSU, but I think he'll get a job immediately. Yeah, he will. He's somebody. done. He's done. He's done really well. You've seen the improvement of those linebackers. Every week, every single week to how they're playing. I mean, Damone and Baskerville, I mean, right now, they're one of the, a great tandem, man. That tandem's unbelievable. Yeah, well, and it just frustrates you, too, and I don't well, know we football. Have a, it's, uh, but it just it makes you think, why did it take so long to ego, make adjustments? Ego. I firmly believe that uh, Jones was being held back because I heard, the, I heard it. 
you know, from the beginning of the year. I heard the grumblings and the rumblings, you know, from up there. And it's evident now, it shows, like it's apparent to me now that that was the case because you're seeing a totally different mindset. Like this isn't the mind of the person that was calling the plays the last six weeks. This is a whole yeah. different, somebody right. got a little bit more freedom and it's ironic that it happened after a decision came down. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Definitely not the guys I saw in Lexington, Kentucky, who <laughs> right. got just run over right. by the Wildcats, or right. you know, even a victory against Florida. Uh, you know, gave up 42 points in, in that game as well, and UCLA just pushed LSU around uh, that night in, in California. So yeah, it just makes you scratch your head. Just uh, and and I guess Rohan Dave Aranda was leaving after 2019. I, I guess, but that's another case of where well, you kind of heard where. How could Coach O be unhappy with Dave Aranda in any any regard? And look at what he's doing now at Baylor. So, well, anyway. I think it, with, with all those guys, um, like I said, us as men as, and as coaches, you know, you 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 get this level of success, and you know, you don't want to listen to anybody. Now it's you're the reason for everything now instead of. Everyone is the whole. It's not the defensive coordinator. It's the OC. It's the staff. It's me. You know what I mean? So, yeah. and then when thing goes wrong, it's them. You know. So I think that everyone that left, that Coach O fired or resigned, whatever the case may have been, in Canada and Coach Aranda and a couple other guys, even some lesser, mm -hmm. lesser people that we don't know about, the Jeffs of the world, guys like that. Um, Definitely better opportunities, but I think those are the guys that question things, that that had their own opinion on things and didn't fall into, you know, I'm just gonna be be and do. They had opportunities and they took them. And I, I think all those guys that left were instrumental in us being successful. Coach Aranda, Coach Canada that year to an extent. Jeff definitely out there in U U USC now. Jeff Martin? Yeah. yeah That's, it, guys like that, man, I think you need to. Guys like Jeff, man, um, um, you need to keep around. Earl in the weight room that's been around since I've been in school, that just loves LSU, that wants to do nothing but see LSU succeed. It's guys like that I think you need to keep around. I mean, Cal Shepard. Shepard should have. Been Kellen Shepard, former linebacker. He should have been LSU's yeah. linebacker coach. He, he, he at least offered it. In, at least, you know, you want guys around like that, man. It helps for the program. It yeah. helps to have a familiar face in there. And you know they love it. So that's 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 what I would love to see happen around here. Just everywhere you go, you go down to the University of Miami, you go to all these places, they have guys in there that's been through the program, that invested in it, that wants to see it do well, that's going to get all the recruits in there and all that type of thing. So. We need to get back to that. Uh, let's talk about somebody who uh, played a large part in your success, uh, Jimbo Fisher. So safe to say that if the coaches who were coaching you in 97, 98, 99 would have stuck around, you would have not had the career that you had under Jimbo Fisher. Correct. So uh, LSU's playing Jimbo Fisher this weekend. Of course, the head coach of Texas A&M, it appears uh, that the first time around he was asked about it, we joke about Jimbo. He talks real fast. Right? Yeah. Sometimes. Oh, I love it here. Car I love, love my chancellor. I love Car the school. Sales, yeah. <laughs> so the first time he got asked about it, he, he didn't deny it. Now, the second time, he painted himself into a pretty big corner in terms of being able to come to LSU. And right now, as you and I are sitting here, they're, they're really, I guess he, the Jimbo talk is somewhat floating out there, but it seems like he's going to stay at Texas A&M. He's got great recruiting classes there. He's 56 years old. And um, so... But just talking about Jimbo, just how, well. First off, I don't believe none of that. Like I don't believe nothing he said on TV. I don't believe nothing. No, I don't believe nothing any of them say on television. Cause I've seen all of them get up on television before and say the same thing. So you wouldn't rule them out? No, if, hell no. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I think that he's a clearly a fantastic coach. I think if you look at the top offensive coordinators over the last whatever year that has gotten their guys drafted, that has, has quarterback drafted, you'll see he's right there with, 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 with them all. Um, he develops, man, and that's the biggest thing. He develops, and we have been missing a developer at that position on offense, and especially at quarterback for the last 15 years. We haven't developed a position. 
to where you have some consistency consistency at it and you see guys actually getting better and better. Now part of that has been because we've had so many so much turnover at the offensive coordinator position. So guys there's no consistency or continuity in there with anybody there because nobody we don't know how, to, how long anybody going to damn be around. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I know he'll bring that. He showed, he's shown that year in when he was at Florida State with Ponder, Jameis, and these guys. And now we're at a &M. He lost his starter this year, came back with the backup. Backup went down for a little bit, played the walk-on, walk-in, went down, came back to the second. So he knows at least how to keep the quarterback interested and also keep it friendly and keep it to where he's successful. And that's one of the biggest things he brings to the table. And he knows how to build a program, man. And he's been here before. Those are all the positives for him. And now a lot of people are pointing out his age. and Which I don't think 56 years old is old at yeah, all. Yeah, neither do I. And they pointed <laughs> out his offense. But he's always in the tops with everything his offense. He's changed from when he's going to the RPOs more based on what he, if he has his quarterback. So, I mean, a lot of things with that and putting up points don't bother me. Um, but that ta that money, now, I don't know how big that would be for him, but I know if he was to come here, it would be um, his last stop, so to speak. Yeah. Because I know he loves it here when he was here before. We've talked before at A&M while he's been at A&M. He loves it there. He loves what he's doing there. He loves the, the accessibility he has to just the funds and the whatever he wants to do. So that's all the things that, the money part and being backed is the biggest thing that he has at A&M that we would have to match here for him with his fundraisers, for his kid, his foundations, and those things. You know, those are the things that's important to him. Well, uh, money doesn't seem to be an issue with Scott Woodward, uh, no matter what he's done so far or done in the past. Uh, I mean, so. Scott's made some amazing hires. Johnson, uh, Miss Mulkey. Like he's made some really good hires, but Miss Mulkey. Yeah, Kim. I met her. I love her, dog. Oh, she wow. my new favorite coach, dog. I yeah. met her at Fields, and she, she just. I mean. Oh, I love it. I love Kim Mulkey, dog. Yeah, it's it, it to me really. It really is. I don't want to sound uh, whatever, but I mean, just seeing her every day is kind of like a gift, you know, and in, in a Dude. way to you know see a Hall of Famer like that. And the say one hello thing, and, the one thing she you know about her, she ain't playing. She going to win, dog. She is not playing. She, and she ain't going to take long. That lady is not playing. I love that lady, dog. Her yeah. energy is infectious. You yeah. hear me? Did you see her at the end of the game the other day with the Raging Cajuns? No. So they're up by 30 in the Cajun Dome, and they're dribbling it, and she wants them to dribble them out, dribble it out. And some girl, I guess, who doesn't get a chance to play that often, hoist up a shot from the wing, and the teams are waiting to shake hands, and, and Mulkey's just lighting into them. You know, what are you doing? We dribble it out. We don't shoot the ball with a 30-point lead. Very Nick Saban-ish, right? Yeah. No matter what the score is, the scoreboard, yeah. I'm going to teach you a lesson. This is how we're building this program. We Absolutely. Don't, we don't take a shot. Um, right. That's insulting. That's not basketball. Right, right. Right. You're not respecting the game. If the game clock is less than yeah. the shot clock, you dribble it out. You dribble it out. Finish it out. Say, so, oh, yeah, I'm excited uh, about women's basketball moving forward. I think as of right now, sitting here with Rohan in late November, I think they're going to make the tournament for sure. And win a game or two, so at least. She's exciting, man. I don't count her out of anything, yeah. any single thing. The recruiting's got crazy. <laughs> recruiting's going crazy, and then you got the boys going crazy. It's a good yeah. time. We, we just need football to come back, and we'll be all right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, yeah, Will yeah. Wade may have his best team <laughs> so far at LSU. Them, them guys are uh, the Monsters. first. First time since 46-47, 1946-1947, they've held their first five opponents under 60 points. Hey, that's the thing I was just that's the thing I was about to say. I had a chance to watch them practice. Listen. <laughs> they play defense. <laughs> Let me just say that. They play defense and it's smothering, man. It's smothering. And that, yeah. and Days is coming into his own this year. I mean, he he he, he can go for 30 at the drop of a hat. Yeah, and he had an off night the other night against Belmont, and they still blew him out by Dude, 30. He's, he's, they have a really, really good team, and I'm excited by the way they play defense. Anytime you can play defense like that and turn people over the way they're turning out, it yeah. reminds me, it's not quite, but it's almost like that Arkansas. Uh, 
in the 90s. Oh, man. The, 60 uh, minutes, what is it? Uh, 40 minutes of 40 hell. 40 minutes of hell, Nolan baby. Richardson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. With the big dog, Corliss Williamson. Yeah. That was well, a good team. You grow up, when you grow up, Rohan, everyone likes to go out and shoot, you know. No one wants to get down in the defensive stance and, uh, and, and move your feet and work. So, um, well, all right, uh, a few more things with you. So, do you think uh, when Jimbo goes up against LSU, do you think the Ed Ogeron on the other sideline means anything to him in terms of he knows how this whole storyline has gone with uh, his name always kind of linked with Ogeron's in terms of the LSU Oh, job he want to beat him if that's your question. Yeah, of yeah. course he wants to beat him. Not only just because it's that, but because it's LSU, because it's – a SEC team because he's also building a program. But yeah, of course, all these coaches have that little thing in the back of their head. You know, it's supposed to be a rivalry. It's rivalry weekend. Um, of course, of course, he's coming there. He's every, all, all, everything you just said and everything that's linked to them. The seven overtime games back then, like everything. Yeah, of course, this is, this is definitely becoming that type of thing. Anytime a job comes up here, Jimbo's name pops up. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's gonna be one of those things where he's definitely coming there trying to, you know, uh -huh. I think this game's going to be a war. I think LSU's going to play very, very hard. Oh, I think they're going to uh, play hard. They know, have. I don't know if they're going to win. I don't know if they can score enough points to win, but I think they're going to play hard. Uh, let me ask you this, and uh, we'll be wrapping up here. Uh, there's been some debate. Do you think it's a positive for LSU to go to a bowl game this year, or do you think after the year they've had and everything, maybe it's the best thing just to kind of shut it down and no, flip, I think turn it, the page? I think that is always a positive if you could win and you can go to a bowl game. Fifteen extra practices. Yeah, I definitely think that it's so much positive that could come from it. Guys get that bitter taste out their mouth. Guys go, you got seniors that are on their way out. They get an opportunity to go and enjoy it. Um, you know, their last little hoorah. You also get to see guys with the extra bowl preparation. You get to see guys get more reps. You get to see, I mean, it's, it's a plus okay. all the way around for me. I mean, I know it's not what you would like to go to because if you're at LSU, you expect to go to big time bowl games all the time. But it doesn't happen like that all the time. And this is one of those years where it didn't. But if you can salvage the season and through all that's going on and say you inked out six wins and got a chance to go to a bowl game and get seven, feel a little bit better about yourself. Okay. Gasparilla Bowl. We're holding out hope. What is that? <laughs> it's in Tampa. I think it's a few days before Christmas. So it'll be warm weather. Tampa, get home before Christmas. Mm. I don't want to go to Detroit like the Motor City Bowl or yeah. Shreveport. No well cold, though. You were on the sideline for uh, Independence, Bowl. Independence Bowl, right? No, I say nowhere cold. That was, that was terrible. <laughs> that was Notre Dame when... Uh, you mentioned Rondell Mealy earlier. That was yeah, that was game that, was, that was terrible. That was a terrible bowl game. <laughs> that was my, I think that was my first one. Yeah, that was a terrible bowl game. It was like everything was outside. It was cold. It was underneath like some kind of hangers, plane hangers. It was cold, rainy. That was terrible. Independence Bowl was a terrible bowl game. <laughs> I think I was. I saw some video of you guys. Just, I don't know if it's just kind of like a walkthrough or something, but y'all were practicing in a parking lot one day. It was a, uh, it was a hangar. It was like a, uh, it was a hangar where they put planes and stuff at. Okay. But it was, you know, we was practicing. Like it was terrible. Asphalt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they it was terrible. Kevin Falk running around I'm out there. I'm telling you, dog, it was terrible. <laughs> that, sh that, that was terrible. Then there was nothing to do out there. Then the police, all they kept warning us about was gangs. I'm like... Crips and all that. I'm like, <laughs> in Shreveport? It was terrible. It was terrible. Well, it was 24 years ago, but Rohan Davey, obviously not an endorsement. Not, the, the Independence Bowl won't be running that in a 30-second spot, what you just uh, <laughs> nah, <laughs> man. You just talked about. Nah, it, was, it wasn't a good bowl. And it was, a weed, it was, it was the Weed Eater. Yeah, it Paul was and Weed Eater. Pool on. Pool and Weed Eater <laughs> Independence Bowl. It was terrible. All right. Well, uh, have, happy Thanksgiving, Rohan happy Thanksgiving, Davey, number six. Man. I was thinking of famous number sixes. Terrence Marshall lately. Timo, that's my guy. Craig Lawson, four six. <laughs> yeah, Craig was good. <laughs> Deion Craig Smith Jr., right? Is he the latest and greatest uh, on offense? He's been Smith injured. Juice, Wide dude. receiver. He oh, caught, yeah, young cat. Caught the ball over the Central Michigan yeah. guy, and, and since then he's been a little. Been on the show. Banged up or whatever. So. He got to put some weight on, though. He's a slim cat. Yeah. He's, he's talented, though. He reminds me of the kid from, uh, that Maybe. we just talked about Maybe. from. Yeah. Uh, Devontae. Yeah, he reminds me of him. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he looks like him, too. That's, he reminds me of him, his frame. Yeah. All hope, right, Ro. Well, hopefully a uh, new head coach in place soon. Brighter days on the horizon. Tuesday. Jeez. Rohan's daughter is off camera here. She's, she's dying of boredom <laughs> over there, so we're going to get him on the road. Appreciate uh, you coming by, Ro. See you soon. Anytime, my man. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody.